My favorite part of this movie is when Pinocchio takes over the world. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to your everyday nerd B-Sides edition. I'm your host, Zach Center, and all the B-Sides take a look at anything and everything in the same format as your everyday nerd. They're just shorter, unsponsored episodes. As we continue our road to Endgame, it's time to end Phase 2 with the second Avengers movie. Not only did I see Age of Ultron in theaters, but the weekend right after was the first time I watched most of the MCU. So this one holds a special place in my heart. Well, kind of. This was 2015, four years ago. I haven't seen it since, and if I'm honest, I don't really remember it being quite as good as the first Avengers. Age of Ultron definitely had some big shoes to fill. The first Avengers was a massive success, and now we're at a total of 11 films. So let's take a look and see whether or not Age of Ultron is still worth rewatching. I'm gonna show you something beautiful. Everyone screaming. For those that don't know anything about it, 2015's Avengers Age of Ultron is the 11th film in the MCU and was directed by Joss Whedon. The film starts in the country of Sokovia with the Avengers. Here, a Hydra facility possesses Loki's scepter after the first Avengers movie. A guy named Von Strucker uses the scepter to give superhuman abilities to a set of twins, Pietro and Wanda Maximoff, also known as Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch. The scepter contains the Mind Stone, one of the six Infinity Stones that's important to the overall MCU, and after the Avengers take possession of the scepter, Tony Stark and Bruce Banner find artificial intelligence inside the Mind Stone which they use to create Ultron, a global defense program. I know this is a lot, but bear with me. Something backfires when Ultron becomes sentient and believes that he must destroy all of mankind to keep it safe. So, as the Avengers battle an actual talking robot, Ultron gets the help of Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch, Vision is created, another bad guy named Ulysses Claw does something with Vibranium, and a lot of other stuff happens in this 141 minute nonsensical film. Here we have another movie that is very similar to Iron Man 2. At times, it's pretty good. At other times, it does way too much. The thing that's pretty unfortunate is, even though it does a lot in this film, unlike Iron Man 2, this one actually is very important to the MCU. And this is why I'm probably going to leave spoilers in this video, because honestly, if you haven't seen this film, you probably don't care about spoilers. And if you have seen this film, you've probably forgotten about half of what it does anyways. In its two and a half hour runtime, Age of Ultron sets up Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch, too bad Quicksilver dies, lol. The Mind Stone and the creation of Vision, which plays a big part in Infinity War, Ulysses Claw and Wakanda setting up Black Panther, and the Sokovia Accords, which sets up the entirety of Civil War and pretty much the rest of the MCU. And while all this is important to the MCU, and I love the setup to Civil War here, all of it isn't particularly good. For starters, I don't care for Quicksilver, Ulysses Claw, or Scarlet Witch, especially in this film. Claw gets to be Fine and Black Panther, and while I've tolerated Scarlet Witch over time, Quicksilver was extremely one note, especially considering he's just in this movie to die. Vision is another character that's both overrated and grossly underused. I'm actually pretty ambivalent to this character. So that means the rest of the film that I have to talk about has to do with my boy Pinocchio. I, I mean Ultron. This dude has no strings on him. Ultron is what I would consider to be a missed opportunity. He could have been super dope. Instead, he's just this robot that won't shut the hell up. He makes quips every two seconds simply because he was created by Tony Stark. And I mean, he does some fairly cool stuff like taking over a ton of robots and he is the reason that Vision is created. But at the end of the day, instead of just being a bad forgettable villain like most of the MCU villains, he ends up being an annoying one. That means, at the end of the day, the only thing I actually like in this movie is the core Avengers. Their character interactions are still great, just like the first Avengers movie. I love the opening scene. I love when we find out about Hawkeye's family. In fact, this is the first film that we actually get some character for Hawkeye. 
This is also the film that sets up the entirety of the third phase of the MCU. It leaves us wondering about how Tony and Steve are going to act towards each other. It makes us wonder what happened to Hulk and Thor. There's even a scene where Steve almost lifts Milnor, which is kind of important later on. I forgot about the Natasha and Hulk relationship. Is that what you want to call it? Relationship? Like, if I scored movies with a rating out of 10, it would drop like two points just because of that relationship. At the end of the day, Avengers Age of Ultron has its few golden moments, but they're hidden within its bloated, unfortunately boring plot. If you've never seen it, it's definitely important to the MCU, so you should probably watch it. But if you don't care about who Vision and Scarlet Witch are or where they come from, then you could probably skip it. If you're rewatching the MCU for Endgame, there are a couple of things that would make it worth the rewatch, specifically for some character moments in Endgame. But again, you don't have to rewatch it. Honestly, I'll be avoiding this one in the future. I just simply don't care enough to ever rewatch it. But that's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, go ahead hit that like button. If for a reason you did like it, hit that dislike button. Let me know down in the comments, what are your thoughts on Avengers Age of Ultron? We're going to be moving into phase three next time. And I know that these videos were supposed to be done in like by April or something. And they're not going to be even done by the end of May. But I'm working on it. And I got plenty of other videos that I'm writing scripts for right now. So stay tuned. Get hyped. We got more content on the way. But uh, in the meantime, if you want to see more episodes of Your Everyday Nerd, hit the subscribe button, and I will catch you guys next time. Goodbye.